Today I'm in conversation with Vishal Punjabi, the CEO of the Wedding Filmer. Vishal and I talk about weddings pre-COVID-19, what weddings are like today and what the future of weddings look like. Vishal started off as a Bollywood ad and filmmaker and today he makes the most beautiful wedding videos for every bride and groom. If you're getting married, your best friends getting married or even a family wedding, you're sure to suggest the wedding filmer videos. I hope you enjoy this insightful conversation about business, his journey and weddings all over. Enjoy. Welcome to our next episode of The Shan Show. Very, very excited for this one. And I'm sure you will be too, because it's all about um, creative juices flowing, the fabulous people behind every wedding that you've possibly been to, uh, and just watching their videos. Uh, Vishal's videos are like watching a movie. I have literally watched each and every one. Vishal, thank you so much for joining me today on The Shan Show. Uh, Vishal is the CEO of The Wedding Filmer and the brilliant, brilliant person behind all their wonderful work. Hi, Vishal. How are you? Hi. How's it going? That's what everyone's doing these yeah. days. Fist bump uh, from home. Thank you for joining me. And, um, Thank you chatting with me about your wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, I think I'm one of those who's literally watched your videos, YouTube, uh, Instagram, cried through other people's weddings who I don't even know. So uh, I think your videos are just beautiful and brilliant. Thank you. You make me very flattered. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you keeping in the middle of all this? We're shooting in the middle of tough we've been We've been good. We've been trying to stay as safe as possible wearing... My mask is a triple mask. Um, and I try and sanitize as often as I can, stay away from the crowd, um, shoot from a distance, use longer lenses. Um, and yeah, we've so far so good. We've been safe. We finished our last wedding a week ago. It was, um, it's heartbreaking to see how, I mean, it was, it was difficult for the bride and groom too, because they felt the pain of everyone around them. Um, people, their own friends and family were sick, but I think they'd pushed the wedding so many times and they just got tired of doing so and they, they couldn't wait to be together. So as small as they had it, they had it really small. Um, yeah. But it was nice to see. It's encouraging to see that people um, have each other at least for Absolutely. as long as we have. Who and knows. so much more meaningful to have smaller weddings and have the people you care about around you. That so is I'm true. Sure you're, you're enjoying that as well. You get more attention with the close family and, you know, the best friends. That is absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, so Vishal, I'm going to start by asking you one, how did you start the wedding film? Where did the idea really come from? And when did you move to India? So I'm from Ghana, uh, West Africa. And I think as a kid, my dad got the camcorder, the JVC camcorder. And I, was, and I, I used to play with it a lot. I used to record all our family holidays and then we used to come back home and then I used to edit them and I used to have voiceover recordings of documentary footage. And it was now that I look back, it was quite artistic and it was quite lovely to make. And I think the highlight of the holiday was not just the holiday, but it was also coming back home and watching it with the whole family. Mm -hmm. And seeing the amount of joy, I think subconsciously somewhere it sat in me. I always wanted to be a filmmaker. I was inspired by um, lots of stories that you hear in Africa. And Africa doesn't have a very big film industry, but there are lots of stories that you hear as a kid. And I think the biggest dream was to become a filmmaker in Africa. Uh, yeah. That didn't happen because I left when I was 12 and I moved to London to study. And the dream to become a filmmaker was still very present, but I found London to be very racist at the time. It was in the late 90s and I think the area I was staying in wasn't the safest and lots of white skinheads. And I was racially attacked a couple of times, so I kind of didn't enjoy myself as much as I... I think London is great when you're rich and you've got lots of money and you yes. can party and you can you not have to worry about... But I was working and it was cold and I was to work to educate myself and it was difficult and um after some time i just had enough and i'm like you know why am i even here it's not my country let me go back to where i belong so i moved to india for the first time and i came here with not knowing much um i didn't know too many people but somehow um i think the people have been kind to me um although i must say working in this country has not been the easiest um because of, of the, red, the red tape and stuff i've faced over the past 20 years trying to employ people and and, and run a company it's not easy trajan. i think it's not easy you're right uh, it's tough to set up here i think it's also a lot about uh, i face i mean i've seen this in the past it's a lot about who you know how do you get started you know that kind of stuff but you've really made it considering you didn't live here i think more than that it was the red tape like i mean just getting an oci card for myself yeah. was very difficult um getting a visa to stay in india was difficult because i was a foreigner even yeah. though my name was vishal punjabi i'm treated like a foreigner in taxation and 
in work. So it's, it's not the easiest not um, way of working. So right? yeah. to, to grow a business and to expand a business, you need government support. Um, in India, there's no government support for companies like mine. So I yeah. wish there was. Yeah. And tell me, so then how did you finally get started with the wedding film? What was the first opportunity that came your way? Um, I got into filmmaking and I, I think advertising taught me a lot of uh, the brevity of expression, but everything was so 30 seconds long. Yeah. And to make a Bollywood film was was a far-fetched dream because it was just, I mean, you have to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody to know yeah. somebody. Yeah. And that's difficult. So I, I decided to um, film weddings because when I got married, I wanted to have a wedding video, but I really couldn't afford a wedding videographer. Um, so I managed to shoot my own wedding. Uh, wow. with with a borrowed camera and I think it, it really worked out because it I knew my own wedding I, I, I knew what I wanted I knew what I wanted to remember um, I was madly in love at the time so I wanted to make sure that I, I do it really well um, to impress my my then wife and and we made it we, we made it we made it really well and I think when I put it online it went viral in a big way okay. and then I realized that there's nobody in the country doing this because I tried looking for someone I couldn't find anyone not that I could afford anyone even if I did find them <laughs> um, so I started doing it myself, um, and I think I, over the years I got better at it. We, we started creating original music. I started treating it with the same respect I treat um, my films or the movies I used to make or the ads I used to make. So a lot of attention to detail, a lot of attention to cinematography and music, and um, and it's not you can't say performances because they're not performing for you. But yeah. um, I, to me, they are, every bride and groom is a celebrity, so that's nice. I love that actually and, and you do make them really feel like one I know that I've had so many friends when they do want to approach you it's just like the feeling of every video has the essence for the of the people who missed it right they know exactly what the wedding was like because you bring that out so you're right every bride and groom for you is a celebrity um now getting into that space you have shot a lot of celebrity weddings how did that begin you know I we have a lot of startups a lot of entrepreneurs starting out in this space I'm sure would want to know how did you get started how were you the chosen one for some of those celebrity weddings I got really lucky. So I worked with Red Chilies when I moved to India. It was the only company I worked with. I, I got a break with Shahrukh Khan, who was uh, making a film called Ashoka. There's lots of graphics. There's lots of second unit direction stuff. There's lots of writing. They were making a book for it for the first time for a Hindi movie. And um, they're releasing the book with the movie. So there's a lot of design work. There's a lot of writing work. There's a lot of um, filmmaking work that I could do on them. I met Santosh Sivan, who literally um, trained me on how to use a Jimmy Jib and how to shoot with a camera. and. Um, he was amazing. So these were the mentors I had. I had Farah Khan, who was a choreographer back then, um, who was trying to make her first feature. And she took me under her wing to help me break down her script. And I didn't know anything about breaking scripts down. Um, so she sat up day and night and taught me how to do. So everything I've learned, I've learned from people who've really achieved and, 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 and made a name for themselves with the talent that they have. So I'm really grateful for that. It wouldn't have been possible for me to absorb so much on my own. Um, Santosh's first assistant at the time was Saket Chaudhary. Who was uh, I think he's directed uh, PRK side effects and okay. movies like that. He's a fantastic um, human being and fantastic director, and he taught me so much about filmmaking back then. Amitab Shukla, who was an editor, yeah. um, who taught me everything I need to know about editing, um, and they were very patient with me. They didn't need to be. I was this young kid from London, fresh off the boat. Uh -huh. I could barely speak Hindi. I had an accent, and um, but yet I think they felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I look like there was a little malnutrition. I've always been skinny. So I think they all felt really bad for me and taught me everything they know. Um, that's how the wedding space really happened. And that's how I, I, I moved from Bollywood into this space, the wedding. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell us, um, how did you really, when you started the wedding film, it's not easy in India to market your business. It's, it's easy because today we have social media. But how did you bag that first wedding? And then how did, um, you know, how did it unfold? In the beginning, only foreigners were hiring me, no Indian one. The first two years of my work was Koreans and Spanish and French and Jewish and Italian, all sorts of um, Korean. Like I'd done so many different ethnic weddings, um, but not Indian, strangely. Yeah. Um, my first Indian wedding was in 2012. And I think I, I lost my head a little because I'd, I'd never seen a Punjabi wedding. That was the first one I'd actually seen. Oh. You see them in movies. Okay. Um, but this, it, was, it was everything you would imagine it to be. And it was, it was, it was, it was beautiful. I um, mean, it was called Heartbeats. And when I released it online, it was picked up by film festivals. Um, I was written to by art curators from the West, from Germany. Um, it, it was quite amazing that the response we got. Um, yeah. it, it, it played in so many places. It's played in every country online, um, literally. It's got some 30-something million hits on Facebook. Um, wow. 
and it's still somewhere after so many years it's still i still get messages say it's still going viral in places um where people are still breaking into it i think it was a nobody had ever seen a wedding in slow motion with music that was original and they thought it was a movie and it was a movie where i think when they capture movies they try and make it for the story they don't really capture the essence of what they're trying to say and when you're documenting non fiction that's exactly what you're trying to do and it flew it it went really viral for for the next 3 years though it was still slow Gro- growth was amazing people liked it but they didn't still know it they didn't understand it so although couples wanted it parents didn't really get it and then um because of my close association with bollywood back then um with charok and making films like om shanti om i i met dipika padukone when she was making her first film i met um so lots of actors and and, and people you and i met the amirs on honeymoon travels um so you i met zoya akhtar who made made in heaven on honeymoon travels so we kind of built relationships back then when i was working um and i think as time went by karan johar and and, and sharuk khan worked very closely together and ayan was karan's assistant who ended up becoming a friend of mine back then so when when they were making ye jawani i think ayan had seen some of my work online and he he catched on facebook because we were friends and he he saw it and he's like i want the wedding to look exactly like your films i don't want it to look like a bollywood film i wanted to look like your film so can you come on board and help me put that sequence together um and that got me really excited because i'm like okay yeah. i want to make a film but i don't have the responsibility of whether it's like you know <laughs> going over budget or whether it's being shot on time and i've yeah. got other people to worry about that i just have to go there and do the wedding which i can do very well yeah um and then i met kalki and i met um aditya and i met um dipika and vanbir again and it was really nice because that's when we started shooting um the wedding and when they saw what i could do i remember we were playing pictionary at night all of us in udaya villas and the pika looks at me and says when i get married you're going to shoot my wedding for me yeah. i was like oh and then she lived up to that and when she got married she did call and say shoot my wedding for me so that was nice okay. um i think after ye jawani came through and then we made kabira um with pritam it just exploded all over the place um I think the wedding film then became a synonymous name at home. Absolutely. Yes, so that absolutely. Was nice. And I think now people just it's just associating a good Punjabi wedding with the wedding film and you have to have your video in place from you. I have a question so so do you think this is um, maybe just like a more uh, entrepreneurial question where if people are starting out is it very important to put your work out there and be that you know constantly keep your stuff updated? Well, some of my nicest work is not online, and I, I don't think I, I put out as much work as I should. And I know it helps, at least on my case. I can speak for myself. When I put out work, I think the intent is not to show off what we do. I think it's to inspire people, yeah. um, to make them hear nice music, um, to make them see something beautiful, to hear a nice story. Mm. Um, if it inspires couples who are going through something difficult and they see a story that's really inspiring, maybe it gives them the strength to move on and carry on. And, um if they see something they identify with or they a lot of wedding planners use it as a resource tool where they see what other people are doing and how beautifully it can be done or how efficiently it can be done most importantly i think how um sustainably it can be done yeah. um but i think that that's the purpose of and the main reason for us to put it out there if you if you're market leaders we might as well use our voice um within our within our space to to do the right thing Absolutely, and you do that very well. Um, so I want to ask you today, brides and grooms, like we were discussing just before we started this interview. Today, it's all about the bride and groom. No longer the parents say, "Hey, I want this," so you know you have to do it this way. So it's always what the bride and groom want. Have you ever uh, experienced where there are creative differences between you and the bride and groom? Because I feel like today, um, the people getting married always have their own opinion, whether whether it's right or wrong. So whether they know that it's going to turn out brilliantly or not. Um, no this is my opinion and this is how i want it how do you really deal with clients like that i think it's it's about sorting it out in the root of it i think the root of it comes from expectation yeah. um if you can if you can try and figure out a way of expressing what you do to your bride and groom before they pay you the money and sign the contract and block your dates yeah. they are very clear about the expectation from you and what you can do and what you're able to give them and what you're not Yeah. So I try and make that very clear. I show them a full showcase of work. I ask as many I make I let them ask me as many questions as possible and I ask them as many questions as possible before we actually go down to booking someone and signing a contract with them just so that later on when whatever the case may be I think for us it's always been the case this way is that if you've booked us to get your wedding when you get your wedding film the film should be much nicer than what you expected. 
um, I think our, our, our purpose is to always surpass people's expectations. And it is difficult. It's not easy to be consistently good, especially when you're doing weddings for Bollywood celebrities. I mean, they they are in they, are, they they see themselves on screen. They wear makeup and hair every day. It's nothing yeah. new for them. Yeah. I think for normal people, when they get married, the whole idea of wearing a sabya sachi lenga and getting your hair and makeup done and taking fabulous pictures and opening champagne in a silver gown with yeah. a massive cake and having the spotlight on you is to make you feel like it's your it's your it's your Oscar night. It's it's yeah. the night you have arrived. It's the night where you you and your family can celebrate to celebrate. Okay, this is the purpose of me being in this world now and now I'm going to use this marriage to become a stronger, bigger, better human being. I think to celebrate that is why people um, get married and to feel like that celebrity for those days because they don't have those award functions on a daily basis or they don't have uh, uh, it on an annual basis like celebrities do. But when you do it for an actor, they already have that. Yeah. They already have songs composed for them. They already have nice shots of them in slow motion turning around and look. They already have that slow motion fera shot of the fire. It's not something they need to see yeah. themselves do. So what is it you can do as a filmmaker to impress them? Mm. Um, I use storytelling and I use the magic of music to make music that even if they've been in a song before, um, there's a certain joy you get from listening to a song composed by the wedding filmer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like, they're, like you said, it's their Oscar night. So uh, that's what's brilliant. So how would you describe your filmmaking style? Do you think it's really evolved since you began? Do you think it changes with every mm. wedding that you do? It is. I'd like to believe that we've gotten better over the years. I think there's sometimes when me and my crew, we sit back and we watch some of the older work we've done. And sometimes I cringe a little bit and like, oh, I should have done this better. Oh, we were so naive back then. Um, and we didn't know what we were. I think we, we, we learn every day. I, I bet like 10 years from now, when I see some, we still see some of our work, which we did back then and are still very impressed and be like, wow, we did that back then with the resources we had. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, because uh, it's, it's, there's always you you always every day is a learning day you always keep evolving to get better but i think our filmmaking style can best be described as real um as unobtrusive um but the technology we use has allowed us to be a little more cinematic and aesthetically pleasing yeah. um and i think most importantly it's honest um if you can treat it with respect and honesty that's i think the two qualities a wedding film really needs for you to make it shine yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to ask you now, of course, we're in the middle of this pandemic. It's been tough. A lot of businesses are really struggling. Small businesses, larger agencies who've employed so many people. Um, how have you been dealing with it? What's business been like? What do you think the wedding industry will be like in times to come? Unlike the Indian government, I think we planned for it. We kind of saw it coming. So we knew yeah. it's going to get difficult again. COVID isn't over. We are all aware of that. Yeah. And I think the first time around, there was a certain sense of panic, even within our organization. We didn't, we were very worried about what's going to happen to the weddings we were supposed to do. We were very stressed about um, the advances we had taken from people. But I think time has taught us that um, people want to get married. And I think what's happened now is that even more so they've realized the importance of having it captured well, um, so that they can share it with the friends and family who couldn't make it. Um, and since they're saving, they're saving so much on decor and on clothes and on jewelry and on food and on the bar and everything else, yeah. they, they are spending a little bit more on the photography and the videography so they can treasure that day. And I think most of them who've done it have not lived back to regret it. They've just been very grateful for having what they have. Um, so I think it is working. A little bit of planning is important. I think all of us saw and knew that this would happen. So um, I think the companies that needed to scale down have scaled down. Um, not to say that um, we shouldn't help each other in whatever way we can. What I am trying to do is trying to create as many jobs as possible. Um, even though it seems like a very stupid time to hire, um, we are looking at hiring a few people uh, at this point of time, just so that we can continue the work going. Um, we're trying not to cut salaries this time around so that we can make sure that everybody gets paid in full because everybody is working really hard. Mm -hmm. And we've been very lucky and, and grateful that it's been a good year, even though the pandemic hit. I think when 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 Maurit started coming up opening in in October to kind of March, mm. um, we did more weddings than we've ever done in our life, and we were grateful for it because that gave us a chance to get lots of people employed, um, get the studio running again, um, and start making films and do what we do best. Um, so yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's so important that even though you are sitting at home right now, I mean, like for you example, you're editing, uh, you know, and I'm sure brides are talking to you about future weddings in the year. Try to hire as many people as you can. I think that's great advice if you can afford it, because a lot of people would have lost jobs even this time around. You know, um, we're going through this for the second time. Like you said, we uh, were better planned. Uh, but I think uh, that's a really nice thing. Talk to as many people as you can, because they probably need the help. Um, I want to ask you in the world of weddings, it's really not easy to plan a wedding. When you, I mean, I've seen families that start planning a wedding a year in advance. What's been like the biggest challenge for you in terms of shooting a wedding or maybe with a bride or groom? What's been that one challenging thing? Crowd management is a problem we always face at Indian weddings. I think um, it's not, it, it, I think I don't think Indian, Indians are very aware of how a wedding should be. When the fedas happen, for example, people are scattered all over eating, chatting. Um, so I, I think it's not culturally driven. And I think it, it, it change when it comes to tradition happens very slow. But it's also in times like a pandemic where you see, or when 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 epic things like this happen, um, that you see people change because then suddenly weddings that were massive with ten thousand people, five thousand people, which were more like a mela or more like a film fair award function, have become um, thirty people, forty people, fifty people weddings at homes, and this is going to stay. I don't think we're, we're it's going to go away anytime soon. It's going to be here for at least three years. It will pick up, and you will have the odd big wedding um, in between. But I think the the essence of having smaller weddings will teach people to be more respectful because the smaller the wedding, everyone's so clued in, everybody wants to be respectful and everybody wants to be there for the couple and bless them. So the energies suddenly shift and the energies change. Um, crowd control on big weddings are a problem. I think wedding planners who are not in it for the, for, for, for the work of it and are in it to make money um, because, oh, it's a lucrative business, rich people get married in a big way. And a lot of wedding planners think this way. Hey, I'm in the wedding space, let's loot them. But it's someone's wedding day, and, and it, I've seen it way too often. Where um, the other thing that I mean, these are these are these are things that hamper my work directly, uh, because if a wedding planner is not on point, then our requirements are not met, yeah. and then it becomes a problem on that day, and I end up not being able to do the work I was hired to do, which is very very important for the bride and groom. And unlike most of the people's jobs, mine only happens once. Yeah, happens. so Correct. you have to make sure you're on point when it happens. Um, and it's very irritating to not be able to have the freedom to do that with that. So, yeah, yeah I agree because um, I've seen so many people who even scringe on their wedding photos and their wedding videos. But I'm like, hey, that's what's going to last with you to show your kids and your grandkids. Right. So um, you're right. It's the, the coordination is is of utmost importance. If you don't, if you have someone only there to make the money, mm -hmm. that's that's got to be a huge problem. Uh, what's been, I mean, this is a more cliche question. I'm sure people have asked you this, but what's been one of your most memorable weddings? I know it's like saying choose uh, between your babies, but uh, give us an experience that was for you maybe the best. There's so many. I think most of the weddings I've done this year, I think they've all been at home. Um, for example, I went to Amritsar for a wedding in November. It was a very small wedding. There were 50 people. It was just basically the bride's friends and the bride's family. But it actually took me back to Yejavani time. Yeah. Where you had the five friends of the bride who were just around her yeah. all the time, giving her giving her everything she needs. And they were really funny and they were really there and they were really present. And I stayed at home with the parents, you know, and every night they'd have a bonfire and they'd cook and the father would open the bar and the mother would open the barbecue and there were kulchas in the morning. And it was, it was like, a, it was a little mini holiday for me, but I had a great time just being at home and, and living with other people. And I think that just made it made it the world of a difference when it came to a wedding. Yeah, that's so personal. I think that's how it should be, right? Very personal. You get to know everyone associated with the wedding too. Um, I'm going to ask you one, uh, the, this question I've been wanting to ask, but it's more on the, on the basis of plagiarism and copycats. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've been through this in the past. And uh, the, the reason I ask this is because I see this happening each and every single day. You know, some, from something small, from just copying someone's Insta, Insta story and not giving credit. Okay, that's like the smallest thing, but but credit is is due to much larger projects, to names, to name it. So how do you deal with copycats to start with? And what advice would you give a business owner if they were copied? Should they let it go? What should you do? I mean, it's a, it's a, if someone copies someone, it just shows a lack of presence and original ideas. Like there are people who blatantly copy, not just they copy the name of the company, they, and some of them do it intentionally so that now digitally everything's on Google, so SEOs count and um, 
you have companies who advertise using my name so that if they type the wedding film or their website pops up but some absurd things happen like that in this country i think um you can either play corrupt or you can play fair and be good or you can play corrupt and be bad because if you are really good then why would you need to be corrupt in the first place um so that negates basically more than half of the people i've ever worked with in this country because a lot of people are corrupt i've ever come across oh, yes. too many oh yes um but I, I, at the same time having said that every idea comes from another one yeah. um you know every idea evolves and you know one person makes a toaster and another person designs it better and a third person makes it pop up and a fourth person will put a timer on it so the toast doesn't burn and over time it gets better that's how most things work so being inspired i love putting out my work i love people watching it and i like people telling me that oh they've been inspired to do something i know lots of people who've seen my work and have come out of college bought themselves a camera started a company and are doing really well for themselves um they try and make original work they're inspired by what i do um but they have an they have their own identity they have their own market they have their own language they have their own way of telling their story and that's what makes it beautiful because i can't do that wedding the way they do and not saying that their wedding film is any worse than mine was yeah. it everyone has their own taste there's some people who like a sabya sachi lenga there's some people who like a manish malhotra lenga right. and there are lots of people some people like you know different photographers I, I i know lots of very nice photographers i know lots of very nice wedding planners everybody works within some people have different budgets some people are logistically unavailable some people don't have um the bandwidth to do that many so um like i can't be everywhere so you do need very good videographers around so that everybody has the right to a beautiful memory um so i think there's a little bit of give and take and be smart about after 10 after 10 11 years though you get tired of fighting the same battles really? um but then there is there is plagiarism which is one thing which is sad and i think in india again that's why i said the government does nothing to protect companies like mine from ipr theft um which is sad because i wish we did because it it would it would give us the power to give more jobs to more people do better work to inspire people um and just overall be better for the market and make it a fair working place for everyone i think when when wedding planners see their designs stolen they get really angry when wedding planners see their names getting stolen like literally the company's name gets lifted and you know it's it's, it's sad when things like that happen because there's so many other names out there real original there's so many ideas out there you can't always take one it's nice to be inspired by an idea and be like oh i like the way she does weddings i would like to do something like this and then yeah. you try and do it your own way um without having to copy them because then that becomes totally agree and like you said um it's about hiring more people you'd actually bring more people on board if you had that trust factor and and not that it's um there's so many talented people out there why you pick inspiration is totally different to just blatant copy uh you know copying someone's work Mm, sure. uh so thanks for answering that so well because i think this may help someone else who's starting out um i want to ask you so any wish list for you vishal you've done most of the weddings you've shot everywhere do you have a wish list some place you've not shot at or a kind of wedding you've not done um i think we've done we've done almost every kind of wedding now i've done a jewish yeah. wedding i've done a european weddings we've done american weddings we've done white weddings we've done brown weddings we've done all sorts yeah. um I'm yet to do a, my first lesbian wedding, which I'm looking forward to do one day. Be lovely, um, yeah. That would be nice. Yes. Um, I guess if if the politics aren't too stressed on it, but it'll be nice too. Um, I, yeah, at my own wedding one day again. If I get married again, that yeah, would be I fun. You, I hope you don't shoot your own wedding, and now you have a reliable enough team which will shoot it, and you know their style. Because please take a break and uh, <laughs> you know enjoy that time. You're at everyone else's wedding, um, so I'm going to ask you, what's next for the wedding film? What's so, coming? We've been putting together a show. Um, we've also been putting together a movie. Okay. um which has always been my lifelong dream to make and i think i'm getting closer and closer every day um people seem to be really liking what i'm doing with it so i'm i'm quite excited it's different from everything else i've ever seen or done yeah um, so i'm quite excited for it that'll um, be lovely we've also made a lot of new music so i'm trying to put together an album um okay for weddings and love songs and all the beautiful ballads we have made um i'm encompassing them into one epic decade long story and putting that together we're launching a brand new website for our company so i'm really excited about that so i'm using this time well to create as much content as i can so that once this is over we can hit the ground running really fast 
and try and make films because at the end of the day, the joy you get when you sit down and make a film and then watch it with your friends and cry and laugh, it's, it's all down for that. That's the purpose. That's the end goal. And then once it's done, then you want to make another one. Um, Absolutely. And, and you just keep getting better with each one you make. Sometimes you make mistakes. It's important to learn from them when you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so my last two questions for you. Uh, the, I mean, the second last question is, if someone is starting out and someone's passionate about, you know, uh, filmmaking, videography, where can they start? Are there any courses online that you would recommend? Or is there a school they can go to? Um, honest to God, I'm not too aware of the Indian structure of, I know there's FTII and there's Whistling Woods and all of that jazz. I can't vouch for how good or bad they are. Yeah. Um, I have a bunch of people who work with me who have come out from FTI and Whistling Woods and are amazing. And I've had a bunch of them who are not so amazing. So I think it's, an, it's what you take off as an individual. And if you can afford it or give it that time or if age is on your side. Um, but I think if you're starting out, I think as a company or even as an individual, I think it's important to figure out whether you want to buy a camera or rent a camera. The first step is to have a camera. Yeah. Um, so which camera, what camera and when camera, whether you rent it out or buy it out, how much work are you doing? And how familiar are you with the technology and what kind of accessories do you have for that camera and what are your resources to get those? Mm. Um, so when I started out, for example, I started out renting cameras because I couldn't afford to buy one. Mm. Um, my first film was for 50,000 rupees and oh, the wow. camera is for two and a half lakhs. Yeah. So I couldn't really afford mm. um, the camera that I wanted to use. So I started renting cameras in the beginning for the first year until I built enough capital to purchase my first few cameras and then the first few lenses that I used most um, often. That would then enable me to save the cost of the rental I was paying um, over time. But then I had to guarantee that I was doing enough work to make sure that I recovered the money off the camera. Mm. Um, because over time you realize you don't need one or two cameras, you need multiple cameras mm. um, and different models and then new lenses come out and then newer models come out and then when do you stop buying it really because every new technology comes out oh i need that this one's got low light oh i need that this one's got autofocus oh yeah. i need that this one's 8k oh i need that this you know this one's got like cinetone oh i want that also so this one yeah. everyone's got a better something new um this one shoots in new formats and it performs better it, um so these, these, these technologies are going to keep advancing. AI is going to help the cameras get even smarter and even cooler, which makes our jobs much easier. Mm -hmm. um, over time, I think with technology, especially with Sony, we're using a camera called the A1 right now, okay. which does things which back when I started to do the same things I needed to do, I needed a camera that weighed the size of, it was like around 250 kilos. Yeah. Um, and it was massive. It's the kind they used to make movies. Yeah. Now you have it in the palm of your hand and yeah. it's and it costs like a fraction of the cost of that camera. So it's quite amazing what technology and it's also very easy to use. It's not complicated like the other bigger cameras. They've made the software easy, but it performs that well. It's the same chip that's in those cameras. It's the same brain that's in those cameras. It's just the language is made easier. So it's it's very powerful. Awesome. Times are changing and things are improving in terms of technology. So just, I guess, keeping updated and knowing what to buy at what time. Um, and my last question for you, because we are a networking platform and I really believe in the power of networking and I don't think people should look at it very negatively uh, is, is what my thought is. But how has networking really helped you in terms of building the wedding filmer and your career, uh, you know, in this space? Um. This was back in advertising and in Bollywood. I used to feel back then that to be able to do good work, I need to be seen. Mm. So there's a need to go out every Friday night and Saturday night to where the agency people would go and where the actors would go and, you know, I'd buy a drink and I'd talk to them and I'd buy them a drink. And, you know, we'd talk about things that really didn't matter and, you know, stay up late night and all in the name of networking, I, I felt. It wasn't so much about the friendships or the mm. relationships we were building. It was just because... It was networking. And I thought naively when I was younger that that was what is important. Um, yes, it may be and all to some people who don't have what it takes to make. Yeah. Um, but, but I think at the end of the day, the one thing that speaks more than anything else in the world is the work you do and how well you do it. If you can do your work well, and if you know your craft, and if you can admit that you're not the best at it, and you can keep getting better at it every day, and you're willing to learn every day, nothing is going to make you touch success um, than hard work and being good at that hard work. 
totally totally agree and uh, like the wedding filmer which we see the beautiful videos of all the time firstly i am going to say you need to upload so many more if you are hiding any from us uh, please have them out there cuz we're waiting to see them and thank you vishal it's been lovely chatting with you yet, yet again your work is just phenomenal thank you so so much i had a good time doing this thank you thank you Thank you.